Hey guys, Richard Holder here. Where are my 4.6.2 valve fans? How do you make a 4.6.2 valve modular forward even better? Cam, springs, and boosts. But how much are cams really worth? In this video, we're going to find out how much a cam upgrade is worth on a 4.6 liter 2 valve modular forward motor. And not just any modular forward, it is a hybrid of sorts. It is a non-PI short block equipped with PI heads. In fact, we ported the PI heads, the guys from Total Engine Airflow, and equipped it with a PI intake manifold. I'm also going to show you an AccuFab throttle body upgrade before we add boost. And speaking of boost, we have a Vortec S-Trim supercharger with an aftercooler air to water intercooler. So the question is, how much is a cam upgrade worth on a supercharged 4.6 2 valve modular Ford? Before we get to our data, I want you guys to check out a couple things I have up on the channel. First of all, I've got playlists for any different engine family. I've got lots of LSF, including NA and turbocharged stuff. And I have those broken down for small block Chevy, big block Chevy, Hemi, modular Ford, Honda. There's turbo stuff, blower stuff, nitro stuff. There's all kinds of stuff. So anything that you're looking for, including the other guys where I run the Buick and the Cadillac and the 4.3 liter small little LT1 stuff. So check all that stuff out. But I wanted to cover five different videos that I want you guys to take a look at because I thought that they were really cool and they deserve a second look. The first one is how to maximize power out of your six liter. So check out that video. I'm going to put a link up right here. If you want to know how to modify your six liter, how to get maximum power out of it, check out that video. Video number two is a comparison between a 5.3 liter LS and a 5.4 liter four valve modular four, both NA and boosted. So good stuff. So which one's better, the 5.3 or the 5.4? Check it out. That video is going to be right here. The third video I want you to take a look at is how to cure low oil pressure on my particular my particular vehicle, which was a 2002 Silverado. The oil pressure started getting low. So check out what happened and what I went through to try to cure the low oil pressure blues. That video is going to be right here. Number four, we're going to take a look at on my five liter Ford guys. Would you rather modify your five liter 302 or maybe swap something else into it like a 351? Hard choice, but that video is right here. And the final one, number five, is going to be my turbo test. It is a low buck, cheap turbo test run on a K24 A2 Honda motor. So I ran a variety of different turbos. You can check out all of that stuff right here. Now let's get to those results. Our test motor for this cam comparison on the supercharged 4.6 liter two valve was an early two valve. So it was a non PI short block equipped with ported PI head. So we did a ported PI head upgrade. We also did, we did a lot of testing with this motor. I tested just about everything on it. We ran a Kenny Bell on it. We ran a Vortec on it. We ran nitrous on it. We ran these ported PI heads. We ran a variety of different camshafts. We run a lot of things on this test motor and it worked out very well. If you want to take a look, there's some upgrade. There's a video. If you take a look at the playlist on the modular Ford NA playlist, you can see that there's a video that where we did all the upgrades. You guys can check that out and take a look at it. But for this test, we configured our 4.6 liter two valve it was a 1998 non-PI short block and we ran it with a set of TEA ported stage two ported PI heads and then we also equipped it with a set of stage or a uh, non-PI extreme energy camshafts from comp cams these were 274 cams which was the biggest cam that they offered the biggest shelf cam that they offered for the non-PI head and the non-PI camshafts basically had lower lift these were 500 lift it was a 236, 240 degree duration split and 114 degree lobe separation angle. We also ran it with the, the ran these ported PI heads with the PI intake manifold. And while we had it on here, I did a bunch of testing on different like inlet elbows and throttle body combinations. So I'll show you what happened. This is with the stock elbow and the stock throttle body. Equipped with that and long tube headers run with a fast XFI management system and 65 pound injectors. This combination made 399 horsepower and 390 foot pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we were doing the testing of all the different throttle bodies, because we ran six or seven different throttle bodies on this, or throttle bodies and elbows, I should say. Here's what happened when we put the AccuFab stuff on there. Power output jumped to 406 or 407 horsepower. Peak torque was up a little bit. 
392 foot-pounds, and most of the gains came higher in the RPM range, which is what we would expect from increasing the airflow, which is what that throttle body does. Now, we ran a bunch of these throttle bodies, and I tested them both NA and with the supercharger. We had some interesting results on that test, so maybe I'll pay, post a video up on that as well. But this is what happened when we ran our combination naturally aspirated. So now we can take a look and see what happens when we added a supercharger to this and then also did a cam swap. But remember, this combination right now is with the extreme energy cams. And what I did was I actually did this test in reverse. So we added the supercharger to it, which I'll be, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll be showing you in just a second. And then we, we replaced the extreme energy 274 cams with these smaller factory stock cams to see how much power it actually took away from the combination. So let's check that out. After comparing the stock throttle body and elbow to the AccuFab units on our 4.6 liter two valve, it was time to install boost. So we installed a Vortex supercharger. This combination was an S-trim supercharger and we also had the air to water after cooler setup. So the supercharger is blowing through the after cooler and then into the throttle body. It was equipped with a 3.33 inch blower pulley. And here's what happened when we installed the supercharger on our 4.6 liter on modified 4.6 liter two valve, the power output jumped to a little over 400 to 655 horsepower. And this was at a peak boost reading of 12.6 pounds. Peak torque was up to 556 foot pounds of torque. So as you can see, we had a nice rising boost curve. So we had a nice rising power curve. And this would probably continue to climb had we not shut it off at 6,400 RPM. So we could continue to run this thing out and it would continue to make more power. Like I said, we had a peak boost of 12.6 pounds. Now we had reduced the timing on the NA combination. We were running on pump gas on 91 octane pump gas. We had reduced the timing on this combination from about 29 degrees, which is what it wanted NA, down to about 22 degrees. We also added 100 octane race gas to our 91. So we had a mixture. It was intercooled. We had a little bit more octane. We just wanted to make sure that everything was safe because as our, if you remember, combining the PI head and the non-PI uh, piston resulted in a slightly higher compression than either one of the stock combinations. So we had a little bit more static compression. So we just wanted to make sure it was safe. So we put that splash of 100 octane in it, ran 12 and a half pounds or 12.6 pounds, had this thing intercooled, and it made over 650 horsepower. And we made lots and lots of runs like this. We also ran this thing with a Kenny Bell, which had more low speed response, obviously, than the centrifugal blower does. But the question was after running this, okay, we had our cammed, ported head, uh, PI, non-PI kind of hybrid. But the question was, what would this thing do if we, if we had stock cams in this? Like how much were the cams worth under boost. So in order to find that out, because we hadn't run the combination with the stock cams, we needed to reinstall the stock cam. So here's what happened after we installed the stock camshaft, stock cams, I should say, on our 4.6 liter two valve. We installed the factory cams and naturally the power output dropped because the with the cams, the motor is going to make a lot more power NA and it's going to make quite a bit more power under boost. And as it turned out, it made a quite a bit more. <laughs> we made about we made 550 horsepower with the stock cams and 505 foot pounds of torque. And as we would expect, the peak boost actually increased with the stock cams. That just means that it doesn't mean that the supercharger gets more efficient with the stock cam. As a matter of fact, it's exactly the opposite. The reason that we're seeing more pressure in the intake manifold is because the cam timing is not letting that airflow out. So we're seeing basically boost stack up in the manifold with the stock cam. So if you think about it in reverse, if we were to run the stock cam and we, when we were running this blower at this blower speed and we were making 13 pounds of boost, when we stuck the cam in, the power output jumps up dramatically and the boost goes down, both of which are good things. And, and what we would totally expect if we did a cam upgrade on almost any motor, whether it's a 462 valve or a four valve, any kind of small block Ford or Chevy LS, any of those combinations, when you put better cam timing in it and it makes more power NA, you will lower the boost, especially on a centrifugal supercharger. So this kind of, this goes to show you what these cams are worth. And the other thing that's interesting to point out is these stock cams may or may not have been, in full disclosure, may or might may not have been uh, PI Mustang cams. They actually may have been... Um, uh, truck cams, which are even milder. So the difference between 
these stock cams and a set of PI cams. Um, the PI cams may have been in between these cams and our 274 cams. The other thing to think about, and I wanted to mention this on a 274 cam, we see a big change in power, but also the drivability on the 274 cam is not ideal. I had these cams in my personal early uh, 98 Mustang and they give up low speed power. As you can see, even on this combination, even with the blower, the power is a little bit lower down low below 4,000 RPM. And that's exactly what I saw when we put these cams on an NA combination. They store them fairly good on the top end, but the idle quality is not that great on them. And the drive, the low speed drivability, there's definitely a sacrifice with these cams and low speed power, which you're trading off for all the kind of top end power. So if you like enjoying that and you like revving it out, then these kind of cams would be good. Otherwise, I would actually recommend the smaller cams. I would recommend the 262 cams that Comp sells for these. And I would go with the PI cams that have the higher lift because I think ultimately you're going to make more power with that camshaft. The idle quality is going to be better. The low speed power is going to be better. What I'll do is I, I tested all of the Comp cams, all of the the PI cams and all the non-PI cams on the same motor. So maybe I'll do a video on that. You guys can check out where they all make power and see what kind of combination you would like for your 4.6 tube valve. Let's get to our conclusion. So what is our takeaway from all this testing with the 4.6 liter two valve? Well, because Ford also offered the four valve, eventually offered the three valve and then the Coyote, and because the LS motor exists and all these other things, the 4.6 two valve Ford has given a bad rap. But personally, I like the motor and like everything else because Ford made millions of them and like everything else, they respond well to upgrades. They like ported heads, they like camshafts, they like intake manifolds and like everything else, obviously, they like boost. Now this test shows that if you add cam timing and improve the cam timing on the sink and it makes more power NA, it will definitely also make more power under boost. That's not surprising. When you add a camshaft, you're going to increase the power and decrease the boost, both of which are a good thing. So if you want to improve the power output of your 4.6 liter two valve, cam, springs, and boost just like everything else. All right, you're older guys, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, make sure to check out those playlists, more testing coming up.